I can't put it off any longer. My flight to Tokyo leaves tomorrow morning. I'm Jack, an Australian street photographer, but it is my day job as a scientist that makes packing so hard. Years of failed experiments due to unpredictable faulty equipment have made me paranoid. I need at least two of everything just in case anything breaks. Over the years, I've figured out a multi-bag solution for packing camera gear. I'm not a minimalist, I've come to terms with it, but I'm also not an idiot. I'm well aware of the paradox of choice. The more gear I bring, the less satisfied I'll be with any single creative choice I make, but but today let's talk about how to still travel light while packing four cameras, way too many lenses, and three camera bags, all while trying to not let gear ruin my trip. Yes, you heard right, I'm bringing four cameras to Japan. Well, technically only three for now. This video is not sponsored, but a big thank you to Wotencraft for sending me some of the bags and accessories I'll be bringing to Japan. No funds exchanged hands. More on this later in the video, but first, mystery camera one. Packing has become more complicated since starting this channel, and I'm now testing out the Nikon ZF and all the F1.8 Z primes, 35, 50, 85, as well as the compact 40mm F2 Special Edition. I don't use a hand grip for the ZF, I just use a leather half case, link in the description below. Real world use while traveling is the best way I know to review gear, but this setup is not ideal. It helps that I'm very comfortable with all these focal lengths. It's interesting that there's not too many reviews of these lenses or Nikon gear in general here on YouTube. And look, I might be part of the problem, which brings me to mystery camera number two, which is not a Sony. There's just not enough space to pack all my full frame Sony lenses and the full frame Nikon lenses, not to mention the camera bodies. So this time I'm leaving my Sony kit at home. Camera 2 is actually the Fujifilm Mini Instax. It's my daughter's camera, but I'm in charge of charging it. This is the USB-C model and I buy the film in bulk. About a dollar a print, hopefully it's on sale in Japan, and the best thing about it is that it's not actually instant. There's a micro SD card and you can just print the ones you want. As a raw shooter, when I first got the camera, I was a bit skeptical. Now I get it and understand how Fujifilm is printing money, not just because of X106 pre-orders, but because the colors always look great out of this camera. I know it's film, but whether it's ambient light or flash, everything looks good. We buy our daughter an empty scrapbook at the start of the trip and she fills it with an Instax print every single day until the end. It's a great way to keep a toddler entertained when they wake up really early in the morning. So that's a tip for any new parents watching. Even though it is a small camera, yeah, all the film cartridges, it takes up quite a bit of room, but everything fits into camera bag one. Word and Crafts 18 liter pilot backpack. Again, this video is not sponsored by Word and Craft, but if you're interested in any of their gear, whether it be the bags or the straps, there are affiliate links in the description below if you'd like to support the channel. This is the khaki brown finish, which matches my other pilot slings, goes along with the magnetic fidlock opening, which is famous at this point at the top, the zips for quick access to the camera cube on either side of the bag. Each side is further separated by one extra small divider, so you can pack a camera and one to two small lenses or accessories on either side of the cube. On the top, I try to leave some space open Open for snacks and jackets, it fits up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro, no problems. The chest sternum strap comes standard, as does the tripod strap on the side, but you can also pay extra for a waist strap. Everything's removable, which is good for me because extra bits hang off the outside of the bag, catches under the seat in front of me on the plane, and it just makes it that much more complicated. Trains and subways are so cramped to Japan anyway, so I always want my bag to stay as streamlined and as close to my body as possible. Luckily, the shoulder straps are wide and comfortable one less thing to worry about. Speaking of straps, on the ZF I have a Wordencraft parachuter strap in a camo paracord with an olive full grain leather shoulder pad. This uses Kura split rings to add to its vintage aesthetic, but there's also peak design anchors if you're in that ecosystem. I wear my straps crossbody. I'm six foot tall, about 75 kilos, and this is the 120 centimeter long version. The leather shoulder pad is smooth on both sides, and the ends of the paracord rope, as well as the rubber O-rings, give it a bit of friction to stop the camera sliding around too much. Word and Craft also make full grain whole cut leather straps with vintage detailing. I'm saving this one for another camera, but before I talk about mystery camera three, let's pause and reflect that this is already a lot of gear, but I keep the weight low by one using a smaller laptop, only a 14 inch laptop, and two not packing a tripod. The Nikon ZF stabilization is amazing. I can handhold up to one second shutter speed and I'm happy with ISO 32000. There's just no need to use a full size tripod on the ZF for my style of 
shooting. The Street Camera 3, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, also does not need a full-size tripod. Its 20mm lens means I can hold the camera pretty close to me by hand, dock it to the neck mount or the small extension pole tripod from PGY Tech when I need to put it down. I've got the Creator Combo with the wireless mic and the wide angle lens adapter plus battery grip, all of which fits in this little pouch that can fit in the top compartment of the backpack, along with Interestingly, another camera bag, camera bag 2, the Wordencraft 3.5 liter Pilot Sling. These two bags were designed to work together. I removed the shoulder strap and used the 3.5 liter sling to store lenses. The bag itself has some padding on the outside, but it's still very light because of the Cordura fabric. And at a pinch, I can also use it as a separate bag if I need to, but I won't because the third and final camera bag I'm bringing along is the Pilot 7 liter. The hype is real. It's just big enough for everything I need, but small enough to stay out of the way. I flatten it and keep it empty in my check luggage on the way there. Took out the iPad mini divider and just have one divider in the middle. ZF with one lens attached on one side, Osmo Pocket 3 and accessories on the other. Lens blur, lens pen, microfiber cloth. And I use this leather battery and SD card holder from Zade Made, as well as an ST and micro SD card holder from JJC. I use ProGrade digital SD cards, Kingston and Sandus micro SD cards, and back up everything onto four terabyte Samsung T7 Shield SSDs. The rest of my accessories, that all goes into the backpack when going to and from airports and hotels. But for day trips or solo shooting, the seven liter sling all the way. A small sling with a quick adjust strap is much more discreet in crowds anyway, and I'll blend in more with the locals than other tourists with huge backpacks on. Back to the 3.5 liter. It's a great backup, but primarily it's for storing lenses. Four Nikon Z Prime and any M mount lenses I want to bring along, whether it be the 35 Summerlux FLE version one or any Voigt lander lenses I might have. And they work great with the M to Z TT Artisan six bit adapter fitting perfectly into this bag. Why am I packing both Z and M mount lenses? It's all connected to the final camera I'm bringing along and using in Japan, Mystery Camera 4, which I can't show you because I don't have it yet, but it's been ordered, paid for, and is waiting for pickup. Bringing four cameras on a trip goes against every creative principle I know, but that camera was too good a deal to pass up. Even if I don't shoot with it much on the trip, it'll be an amazing camera to add to my collection. It's not a new camera, nor is it brand new, but I trust secondhand goods in Tokyo more than brand new stock almost anywhere else in the world. Any guesses on what it might be? You can tell me in the comments below and find a video of me tracking down this mystery camera in Shijuku here when it's ready to go. I'm Jack, hoping to still have some peace after juggling all these cameras on my trip.